Holy sh! It's back, man. After five years, I'd pretty much given up hope, but uh, guess what? The hype is real. Darksiders is back with a 2018 release, and from this gameplay footage, it looks like the franchise has picked up right where it left off in terms of game mechanics and big, big, scary monsters. There are a lot of people already comparing this gameplay to Dark Souls, which, yeah, you, you can see where they're coming from there. Uh, so who knows, maybe this game will be like Dark Souls, but with less deaths. What is exciting is that we may already know a lot about the story, maybe even the end. And that's thanks to this scene in the trailer here, where we can see that War is still imprisoned, and we can also see that Fury has some mad boda. So what we can take from this is that the game takes place after Straga kills War on Earth in the first game because that's when more gets saved and imprisoned by the Chard Council. Who, by the way, have voices deeper than an existential crisis on a Sunday afternoon. Interestingly enough, Nordic confirmed that that's when Darksiders 2 is taking place. Now, it's important to mention that War's imprisonment happened about 10 minutes into Darksiders 1, which means the majority of Darksiders 1 happens after Darksiders 2, and it seems Darksiders 3. So we must have a parallel running story here between Darksiders 2 and 3. Because if we think about Death's story in Darksiders 2, he wasn't summoned, he rode off on his own back to try and prove his brother's innocence. Whereas from the trailer, and from these screenshots from an Amazon description leak, we can see Fury has been summoned by the Council to hunt down and dispose of the seven deadly sins brought about by war. Accidentally, of course, he, he didn't know what he was doing. So, we can deduce that she is successful in clearing the deadly sins because there is no mention of them in the first game which again, takes place after Darksiders 3 and 2 and timey-wimey stuff, it's all very confusing. What will be very interesting though, is if we will see any crossover from Darksiders 2 and 3, because essentially Fury and Death are on the Earth at the same time. There are also a million questions raised by setting the third game in this time period, mainly from what we've seen in the second game. Will we see Lilith, creator of the Nephilim for example? She has an untold story that's rooted before the Horseman, and has had dealings with Samael and the Dark One. She helped Death, will she help Fury too? Does Fury know that Death is on the Earth? Will we see strife at all? Meaning, ironically, that during War's imprisonment, all horsemen walk the Earth. We, we have a long time to speculate this between now and 2018 though. Another major question that needs to be addressed some way in this game is where are the humans? Alright, major spoilers ahead here by the way, so if you intend to play the trilogy for the story, stop listening now. But at the end of Darksiders 2, Death sacrifices himself for the return of the Third Kingdom. But well, where are the humans? Will we find out what happened to them at all? The only other thing we know for certain is at the end of Darksiders 1, we see War summon the other three horsemen. Which means he summons Death from, well, Death. Which does mean that Fury mustn't survive this game either because she rides next to him in the sky. So we're calling it now, Fury might die in this game at some point. I know it seems very on the fence, but I think it needs to be addressed. No matter what happens though, we're just excited to be able to say that we will be playing Darksiders 3 soon. And if that isn't enough to get your jimmies rustled, then I don't know what is. So of course drop a like and subscribe for more Darksiders 3 content as we get it. And as always, thank you very much for watching, console optional. Not alone. War had broken the seven seal, summoning the horsemen of the apocalypse. And the number of the riders shall ever be four.